Hello, uh, I'm Prasad Ayer. I'm a gastroenterologist uh, on staff at Mayo Clinic in Rochester, Minnesota. And I'm doing this video abstract um, to introduce and hopefully raise your level of interest in reading our review article titled Barrett's Esophagus, which is soon to appear in the Mayo Clinic proceedings. I would also acknowledge the contributions of my co-author, Dr. Vivek Call, who is from the University of Rochester in Rochester, New York. In this review article, we have attempted to summarize in a concise manner some of the recent developments in the diagnosis and management of patients with Barrett's esophagus. As you may know, Barrett's esophagus is a metaplastic change in the epithelium of the distal esophagus in patients with multiple risk factors such as chronic gastroesophageal reflux, central obesity, smoking, male gender, and Caucasian ethnicity. The condition is of interest because it is associated with an elevated risk of developing esophageal adenocarcinoma, which is a lethal cancer with rapidly rising incidence in the West. In this review article, we focus on three main aspects of patients with Barrett's esophagus. First, we attempt to highlight the rationale and some of the recent exciting developments in the non-endoscopic detection of Barrett's esophagus. So far, the care of patients with Barrett's has been limited by the availability of only sedated endoscopy as a screening tool to detect it. Over the last three to five years, there have been several advances in the non-endoscopic detection of Barrett's, which makes this available and accessible to widespread application. And the article will highlight some of the recent techniques, some of which have been developed at Mayo Clinic as well, which will make this a widespread possibility. We also focus on some of the recent exciting developments on the endoscopic and non-surgical treatment of patients with Barrett's with dysplasia as you may know, Barrett's progresses to adenocarcinoma through the development of dysplasia and endoscopic techniques such as endoscopic resection and ablation have been shown to not only reduce the risk of developing adenocarcinoma, but also successfully treating early stages of esophageal adenocarcinoma. We highlight some of the established techniques such as radiofrequency ablation as well as some of the more recent techniques such as endoscopic submucosal dissection and balloon cryotherapy. Lastly, we also highlight some of the recent work being done in assessing the risk of progression to adenocarcinoma in those with Barrett's esophagus using novel biomarkers. I hope that reading this review article will provide you with a excellent overview of the recent developments in the diagnosis and management of Barrett's esophagus. Thank you. We hope you found this presentation from the content of Mayo Clinic Proceedings valuable. Our journal's mission is to promote the best interests of patients by advancing the knowledge and professionalism of the physician community. If you are interested in more information about us, our home page is www.mayocliniceproceedings.org. There you will find access information for our social media content, such as additional videos on our YouTube channel or journal updates on Facebook. You can also follow us on Twitter. More information about healthcare at Mayo Clinic is available at www.mayoclinic.org. This video content is copyrighted by Mayo Foundation for Medical Education and Research.